How much worse is the base model Bend M3 Max with a 14 core CPU and 30 core GPU compared to the one that Apple advertised, the full 16 core and 40 core GPU? Because this year they made it $500 more expensive because when you try to upgrade the chip to 16 cores, they force you to get 48 gigabytes of RAM, a $500 upgrade. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of performance tests to find out and I'm actually gonna be comparing the battery life because they're both at 100%, so I'm gonna unplug them and see if that better CPU uses more battery life. So let's start off with Geekbench's CPU test. Both of these are at 4.05 gigahertz in high power mode. And look at that, for the extra $500, we're getting a 10.6% faster multi-core score. You be the judge of whether it's worth it or not, but of course this is just Geekbench. I'll show you in the real world tests what you should really expect. But now the graphics is where we should be seeing an even bigger difference because the 40 core version of the N3 Max has 33% more cores than the 30 core. So let's go ahead and test the metal test. And would you look at that, we're looking at only a 26% difference in Geekbench. That actually doesn't really seem worth it, and now let's get into web design performance with a project sent to us by 500 Designs over in California, a really good web design studio. The first test is gonna be kind of zooming in and seeing how fast it loads the information and look at that, basically perfectly sharp right away, super quick. And then on the other one, huh, looks like that one actually seemed to take a little bit longer. But the main test is to export these 12 layers and see how long it takes. And surprisingly, they both finished in exactly a minute and 26 seconds. So really, for web design, there's no point to upgrade to the unbin chip. And now let's do a more real world gaming benchmark. This is 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme, which is gonna simulate a gaming performance workload. So let's start this. And wow, look at that, 143.8 FPS to 188.3, that's 31% higher. That is actually a huge difference for 500 extra dollars, especially in the gaming world. All you gamers know, that's a big upgrade, especially since you also get the extra RAM as well. And now let's get into Blender 3D rendering performance because the biggest change with these new M3 chips is the new ray tracing cores. So I'm curious to see if the ray tracing does most of the work and maybe the actual difference in GPU count doesn't matter that much. But before we get into that, I've gotta show you guys a couple of awesome new products from our sponsor, Vessi. This right here is the brand new Alta High Top sneaker, which is perfect for winter because it's waterproof all the way up to the top, built with both vegan leather and Vessi's unique Dymatex knit material to keep your feet dry and comfy no matter the conditions. It's got excellent grip on the bottom and it comes in three colors, black, white, and dune beige. Now these right here are Vessi's waterproof gloves and yes, they're made out of the same Dymatex knit material, which sounds impossible, but it actually works. They're soft, stretchy, and comfy, keeping your hands completely dry and warm. Together with the Alta High Top sneaker, it's the perfect combo for winter, and if you don't get any snow where you're at, they've also got a bunch of other options, like their overcast jacket and Soho sneaker, all waterproof. And you can order any of them today by using the link below to get Vessi's best sale of the year. And wow, would you look at that, guys. 28.5 seconds on the full 40 core M3 Max, 31.5 seconds for the bend model, even with the extra RAM that is basically used as VRAM with these Apple Silicon chips, only a couple of seconds faster, that means this bin model is perfectly good for 3D rendering. You should not upgrade to the full model. That's actually very surprising. And now let's move on to some real world CPU based tasks because this model does have 16 cores with 12 performance cores compared to the 14 core model here, which only has 10 performance cores. So let's see which one does better for music production in Logic Pro. Now the main point of this test is to see the kind of stress load that both of them can handle. As you can see, this one has already overloaded and stopped the test. It can't handle 328 tracks, but this one is going just fine. 
Let's try 310. Nope, not 310. And wow, guys, there is a big difference. The 14 core model can only handle 275 tracks compared to 328 on the 16 core model. Obviously, that's already a lot for both of these, but this gives you a good sense of how much more it can handle with the 16 core. And now let's test programming performance in the Xcode 15 benchmark, which has been reworked to take longer so all the other scores no longer match up. But this one's gonna be interesting because we do also have that RAM difference, 48 gigs compared to 36. And it looks like we have 79 seconds for the 14 core M3 Max and 72.5 for the 16 core. Definitely faster, but not that big of a difference, especially with the extra RAM. So even in Xcode, I don't even think it's worth upgrading. And now let's move on to Cinebench 2024. But unlike usual where I do the CPU test first, I'm actually gonna do the GPU test, just one run to see what difference we get here. Now what's interesting is that the GPU usage on the 40 core M3 Max peaked at around 33 watts, while the 30 core peaked at around 25 0.5 watts. That's basically 29.4% more power usage to give us a score that is 25.2% faster, 12,654 points compared to 10,102. That's actually pretty decent scaling in terms of GPU wattage. And now let's switch over to the 10 minute throttling test for the multi-core CPU performance. And wow, the power usage as well. This thing's going up to what, 54, 53, 54 watts, while the other one is only at around 45 watts. Both of them are now stuck at 102 degrees Celsius. It looks like that's kind of the cap for these chips, but I did notice a little bit of throttling on the 16 core M3 Max because you can see the performance core clock, it went down to 3.54, 3.53, but this one actually is stuck flat at 3.58, which is the maximum, and the other one is throttling just a little bit. And just like that, we are now maxing out the fans on the 16 core model, while only around midway, halfway there on the 14 core model, and I'm hearing all of the fan noise from the right side right now. So it looks like those extra two performance cores are very, very taxing in terms of multi-core load. But thankfully, it's keeping the temps in check because we are now running at flat 3.58 gigahertz clock speed, no throttling at all. It's able to keep up the performance. But on the other hand, I'm not hearing fan noise from the left side. It's still at about halfway to the max here, so definitely so much less fan noise under full 100% load. It's been about five minutes into this test and the fans are actually slowing down on this 16 core model, so it's actually able to keep it in check. Now it's reducing the fan noise, which is actually very reassuring. And I'm really curious to see with this thermal camera, what we're gonna see in terms of the surface temps. All right, over here on the 14 core M3 Max, we're looking at about 36 degrees Celsius, right where the chip is at. And on the display, look at that, 40 degrees Celsius, so it's getting rid of that heat very efficiently. Now moving over to the 16 core, interesting. The hot spot where the chip is at is only 33 degrees Celsius. That's probably because it really had to kick up those fans, get rid of the heat, and the hot spot also 36 degrees Celsius, so lower temps on this one because it had to kick those fans up so high. And now that the fan speed has finally slowed down on the 16 core model about halfway on each side, the 14 core actually slowed down even more and I'm still hearing almost all the fan noise on the right side. So this thing so far is king. At least for the fan noise, let's wait for these scores. And there you go, we have our scores, 1597 on the 16 core and 1371 on the 14 core. That makes it 16.5% faster in multi-core performance, which is actually a pretty impressive difference. And now let's get into photo editing performance with Lightroom Classic. As you can see, I have 50 raw 42 megapixel images here and switching between them, they're both just as quick, even with the extra RAM on the 16 core model, they're both 
very, very snappy loading images at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is export these 50 photos and see the difference in export speeds. And by the way, this test is actually maxing out the CPU and the GPU at the same time. So this one's gonna get an even bigger advantage. But wait a minute, they just finished the 16 core model, got 30 seconds, which is mind blowingly fast. And the 14 core model did it in 34.5 seconds. Also very, very fast, but obviously just a little bit slower. Honestly, guys, I'm starting to get very, very impressed by this bend model that's $500 less expensive. And now let's get into video editing performance with Final Cut Pro. This is a five minute project of 4K footage in the most common format that people shoot and edit in, which is now H.265 or HEVC. As you can tell, we're getting perfect 24 FPS playback on both of them, so let's export. And yep, just as expected, they both finished at exactly the same time, a minute and 13 seconds. And that's of course because they both have the same HEVC encoders, so it's limited by that. So because of that, we gotta test something that doesn't rely on the encoders, or at least isn't limited by them. So this is Canon R5 footage, 8K in a 4K timeline. So let's do a playback test, seeing which one kind of plays it back more smoothly. There you go, there it is. Now that they hit 102 degrees, this thing is now throttling seemingly, slowing down, and it's not playing back as smooth. Wait a minute, the 16 core is doing the same thing. It's also playing back slower. And they're actually both ramping up at the same time. Both maxed out fans, they're both heating up like mad because this is a CPU and GPU workload at the same time. However, I am looking on the right side and it's still more smooth, look at that, definitely more smooth than the 14 core model. So I let them cool down, let's do the export and see. And there you go, the test just finished. The fans are blasting off like crazy, but there's not that big of a difference, guys. Four minutes and 48 seconds for the 16 core model and five minutes and eight seconds for the 14 core. That's only 20 seconds longer in the grand scheme of things, probably because this thing was thermal throttling a little bit because it's just fully blasting the CPU and GPU. This is, by the way, the biggest workload that we can find that maxes everything out for video editing. Wow, it's not that big of a difference. And now with all that said and tested, it's time for my honest opinion on which one of these you should buy. But first, we gotta take a look at the battery life. Looks like we have 41% on this bend model, 46% on the 16 core M3 Max. So there's a little bit of a difference. I don't know why, because this thing probably should be using more power. Maybe it's a margin of error or a testing kind of thing, but not that big of a difference. Based on everything that I've seen in this video, with everything I've compared, Honestly guys, save your cash. Just stick with the Bend model. Save your $500, spend that somewhere else. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, subscribe above for more videos like this one. Definitely check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.